From the moment of his induction into a local force, the American policeman is taught how to safeguard the members of his community. His training is an arduous one, for he must be physically able to carry out the rigorous duties which his position demands. His jobs are numerous. He protects public and private property from those intent on robbery. He's always first on the scene in accidents or in other situations where he may be needed. And he helps put those who break the law where they belong and to keep them there. Occasionally, in the line of duty, a policeman finds himself in trouble. It was a rainy spring night in a Midwestern town two years ago. Inside a small lunchroom, patrolman Sylvan Danzig had just finished a conversation with the proprietor, Jack Harris. Look, Danzig, you're wasting your time. All right, Mr. Harris, but don't say I didn't warn you. I'm close, Gorsi. Harris never got to close his lunchroom that night, but he was paid a visit by two men, one named Hess and one named Jensen. Six months ago, Sam Beal booked over 3,000 through you. Then it started down. Last month, it was less than 1,600. All in all, about $5,000 got lost somewhere. Like in one of your pockets. No, no, I, I reported every bet I booked, but it's like I told Leo. It's like Leo told you. Sam Beal doesn't like chiselers. Leave me alone. of circumstances in which rookie patrolman Sylvan Donsig found himself caught on that rainy evening is the subject of tonight's story on Crusader, starring Brian Keith. doing a series of stories for a national magazine syndicate on how refugees were making out in America. Just routine human interest stuff, the stories of people who'd found happiness and freedom. Then I saw it, a two-line, one-column head on the second page. Officer shoots fleeing killer. And a name jumped out at me as if it had been printed in neon. Sylvan Danzig. In two hours, I was in an airport ticket office on my way. I'd helped Sylvan Danzig and his wife, Hedda, escape from East Germany seven years before. Now patrolman Danzig had killed somebody named Leo Hess. While Hess and an unidentified man were fleeing a lunchroom after allegedly murdering the proprietor, Jack Harris. Harris had been stabbed to death. Hess had been shot twice as he attempted to enter a getaway car driven by his companion. A refugee who was a police hero. The story was unnatural. At least that's what I thought until I stood in the Danzig apartment the next afternoon. Well, what's wrong, Sullivan? This was the first time I'd worn my uniform. It was the proudest and happiest day of my life. I wasn't thinking about how a policeman sometimes has to kill. Oh, but this man has was a murderer. 
so were the communists in East Germany, but I couldn't kill them. I should have known I didn't have the stomach for being a policeman. Sure, you yeah. have. You got the brains and the heart. That's more important. What time have you met? Uh, 2.30. I'd better go. But you have a three-day leave of absence. Chief Harmon wants to see me at 3 o'clock. Why? Just routine. I'll get my jacket. Listen, I got a car at the airport. I'll drive you down, all right? Thanks. As soon as Sylvan got out the door, Hedda asked me if I'd stay with him while he went to see his chief. When I saw how worried she was, I told her I'd do my best. What do you want to see me about, Sam? Have you given it to me straight about last night? Yeah, sure. Why? This cop, this dancing guy. Was he close enough to get a good look at you? No. I've got to be sure about this, Harry. Real sure. You can be. All right. Take a walk, Harry. What's going on? Who's that? Tallman, with Jack Harris' wife. Ever since the Boy Scouts who were running this town were elected, I've been trying to find a way to make them look bad. I think I've got it. Go get yourself some fresh air. Come in, Mrs. Harris. Wait in the car. Right, Sam. I know how you feel, Mrs. Harris, and thank you for coming. What do you want, Mr. Beale? Please sit down. You knew your husband was working for me on the side, didn't you? I knew he was taking bets. I guessed it was you. I owed him some money from his end of the take. Over $5,000? I added a little extra. I figured you could use it. I liked your husband, Mrs. Harris. Do you know why Leo Hess killed him? Well, I do. And I know who was responsible for Hess killing him. For obvious reasons, I can't go to the police. They wouldn't believe me if I did. But they would believe you. Would you like to go to them with the real story about what happened last night? I'd like very much to go to the police, Mr. Beale. When we arrived at police headquarters, I asked Sylvan if he minded my going along with him. He accepted, kind of eagerly, I thought. We were ushered into Chief Harmon's office and told he'd be a few minutes late. He was two hours late. Hello, Bandy. Hello, sir. I'd like you to meet a friend of mine, sir, Matt Anders. You? Are you representing Danzig, Mr. Anders? Legally, I mean. No, I'm not a lawyer. I'm a writer. Well, then I'll have to ask you to wait outside until I'm ready to talk to the rest of the reporters. Well, I'm not a newspaper reporter either. I just do features for magazines. I'd like to have him stay, sir. Very well. As long as it's understood that nothing said here is for publication until I release it. Sure, I'm just here as Sylvan's friend, that's all. I've just come from the district attorney's office. Danzig may need all the friends he has. I don't understand, sir. In your report of the shooting last night, you say you knew Leo Hess only slightly from having seen him around the neighborhood. Yes, sir. Danzig, isn't it true that you knew him much better than that? No, sir. That, in fact, you were using Hess to get protection money from Jack Harris? What? Do you deny that you knew Jack Harris was a bookie? Well, I... Now, wait a minute, Sylvan. You're asking a lot of loaded questions. He doesn't have to answer that. No, he doesn't have to say anything that might incriminate him. Incriminate him? How? You got an accusation to make? Go ahead, make it. It's, it's all right, Matt. I'll answer the questions. I have nothing to hide. I'd heard that Harris was taking bets, running a book. Why didn't you report it? It was nothing but a rumor. And not because Harris was paying you money through Leo Hess to keep you quiet? Well, no! Less than five minutes before Harris was killed, a customer overheard you tell Harris, don't say I didn't warn you. What did you mean? I, I told Harris that I heard he was taking bets, 
and if it was true, he'd better stop. He said the rumor wasn't true, and I said, all right, but don't say I didn't warn you. Do you expect me to believe that, Danzig? Well, it's the truth. What do you believe? That Jack Harris was paying Danzig protection money through Leo Hess. That Danzig wasn't satisfied with the amount. He demanded more, more than Harris could afford. Last night you told Harris to pay or else. That's what you were warning him about. Well, no, no, that's well, not take it. Take it easy, Sullivan. That's a pretty serious charge, Chief. After all, he's one of your own men. I'm aware of that, Anders. You're treating him like a two-bit punk in a lineup. Let, let him finish, Matt. You mean there's more? I wish there weren't. After he'd killed Harris, Leo Hess ran out and told you what had happened. And that he was beating it. You realized that if Hess was caught, he'd implicate you. So you shot him, thinking we'd believe you'd killed him in the line of duty. Send in Ryan and Carr. How do you know all this? Harris told his wife about the pressure Danzig and Hess were putting on him. And she's given a statement to the district attorney. Well, she's lying. I'm suspending you from the force, Danzig, and placing you under arrest on suspicion of murder. Take his revolver. I'll take your badge. I broke the news to Hedda as gently as I could, but it was still like hitting her between the eyes with a sledgehammer. Why, Matt? What are they doing this to him? Why is this woman lying? I don't know. Look, did Sylvan ever mention uh, Jack Harris or Leo Hess before last night? Oh, Mark, you don't think that's... No, of course I don't, but we've got to face the facts if we're going to try to help him. What it. facts? There are not any. There is nothing but lies. All of a sudden, it is as if these last seven years never existed, that we were back in Germany, under the Nazis or the communists. Uh, there's a big difference. Oh, is there? Yeah, you stick around. Wait a minute, I'll get it. Wasn't anyone in the door? No, nobody there. That was stuck under the door. Oh, ten one hundred dollar bill. What's this? It was a typewritten note, unsigned, telling Hedda to keep Sylvan quiet. For her not to worry about money. She'd be receiving more. What does it mean? I don't know. We'll see if the police get it. Oh, no! You know what they will think. Well, I know what they'll think if we don't tell them and they find out some other way. And you believe Mrs. Danzig doesn't know where this money came from? I'm sure she doesn't. Harmon, I'm a stranger here, but I've got eyes and ears. I don't like what I've seen or heard so far. Then what's that, Anders? Well, you're making noises like a man that wants to pin something on Danzig. Do you actually believe he killed Hess? I don't want to believe it. What kind of an answer is that? If you think the district attorney and I are enjoying this, Anders, you're wrong. But what can we do? We've got Mrs. Harris's story and no reason to doubt it. We have the customer in the lunchroom who heard Danzig give Harris a warning. Danzig himself admits he'd heard rumors that Harris was a bookie, and he failed to report it. He admits he knew Leo Hess. Now there's this. We've got a clean police force in this town, Anders, and I'm going to keep it clean. I hope Danzig's innocent. Swell. Meanwhile, he's in jail. A cop has to be able to take a lot tougher things than that. If he's telling the truth, he'll be out soon. But if he isn't, he never will. You ever considered the possibility that maybe Danzig's being framed? Well, as a matter of fact, I want to pull in Sam Beale for questioning. Who's Sam Beale? He controls about 90% of the bookie joints, or what's left of them. Why would he go after a rookie cop? Well, this administration has hit Beale where it hurts him the most. There's a municipal election coming up in a few months. Beale's smart enough to know that a scandal like this involving a member of the force won't help us. Haven't you questioned him? Well, I was going to. Maybe I still would in spite of everything, including this. But just before you came in, I had a telephone call from the district attorney. When Danzig was booked and his personal effects were turned over to the jailer, we found the key to a safe deposit box on his key ring. The district attorney got a special court order to open the box. In it, he found Citizenship papers for Danzig and his wife, wedding license, children's birth certificates, and $2,733 in cash.
few minutes after I left Harmon's office, I was in Sylvan's cell. He seemed happy to see me. Hello, Matt. How's Hedda? What do you think? Tell her not to worry about me. Look, the police know about your safe deposit box. They got a court order, they opened it. You know what they found, don't you? Money, $2,733. To the penny. What about it? What about it? Where did it come from? It's mine. I saved it. Where did it come from, Sylvan? You think the money came from Jack Harris or Leo Hess or something? I'm not thinking anything. I want to know where it came from. I've, I've had that safe deposit box for nearly seven years. That doesn't prove how long the money's been in it. I started saving it with two dollars out of my first paycheck in this country. I put away a little every week, as much as I could spare and Hedda would miss. I didn't want her to know about it. It was going to be a big surprise. And someday I was going to have enough for a down payment on a house and I was going to put it in a box and wrap it up like a present and give it to her. Why a safe deposit box? Why didn't you put it in a regular savings account? I don't know. I don't know. Force of habit from the old country, maybe. I, I rented the box to keep papers in, and then I started putting money away. It, it was so little at first, and I... What difference does it make? I don't care if you believe me or not. Go back to New York. Anywhere. Sergeant, I had what I came for. Sylvan's story was too clumsy, too improbable. The way the truth so often is. The next thing to do is to prove that Sylvan was being framed, and I thought I had a way to do that, too. I checked into a place called the Berkeley, a hotel that was going to be demoted any day now. Then I addressed a plain envelope to Michael Abbott, Berkeley Hotel, City. The letter itself wasn't important, but the envelope was. All I had to do was mail it and wait until the next morning when it would be delivered to me. I was Michael Abbott. The envelope was in my box at the Berkeley when I went down for breakfast. I put it in my pocket and went out to eat. Can I give you my check? Sure. It's quite a story you told the DA, Mrs. Harris. You make it up all by yourself, or did Beale give you a hand with it? What do you mean? You know what I mean. Who are you? Didn't your husband ever mention a friend of his called Mike? Mike who? Mike's enough. What do you want? Not a thing, Mrs. Harris. I just thought I'd drop around and find out how much you knew about me. See, your husband and I were working on a little angle together. That Beale wouldn't like very much. In fact, if he was to find out about it, I might wind up the same way your husband did. I wouldn't like that. Keep change. back to my room and made myself comfortable. I didn't know how long I'd have to wait until company came. Oh, I'm sorry. We're closing up. Are you Mrs. Harris? Yeah. I am Mrs. Danzig. Mrs. Sylvan Danzig. What do you want? I want to know why you want to hurt my husband. Why did your husband want to hurt mine? Uh, he did not. Jack's dead. I am sorry. Thanks. But Sylvan had nothing to do with it. He was not taking money from him. He was not working for Mr. Leo Hess. Sure. Oh, Mrs. Harris, I know my husband. I love him. And I loved mine, Mrs. Danzig. Get out of here. I know what it is to lose somebody that you love, Mrs. Harris. During the war in Germany, 
The Nazi came for my father and my mother one night, and I never saw them or heard from them again. I never had anyone until Silvan and now the children. I know what you are going through. Believe me, I wouldn't have been able to come here or to face you if I were not certain that Silvan had nothing to do with your husband's death. I have no proof, but I know it. Only the way a wife can know. The way you probably knew so many things about your husband. I will give you my address and my telephone number, yeah? If you should ever want to talk to me. At nine o'clock that night, I was still waiting. I was beginning to think that my bright idea had blown a fuse, that Mrs. Harris hadn't made the phone call I'd planned on. I was wrong. Come in. Hey, what's going on? Who are you guys? Put this on, Evan. You're going calling. On who? Sam Beale. We heard you were a friend of Jack Harris. He wants to meet you. Why, Mrs. Harris. May I come in? Of course. Please sit down. Thank you. I, I don't know why I came here before going to the district attorney. I guess it was because of the way you made me feel a little while ago. Like you could understand that I could love a guy like Jack and not have to apologize for it. I lied about your husband, Mrs. Danzig. I don't know a thing about him. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Harris. I didn't mean him any harm. All I knew was Jack had been killed, and I didn't know why. And a man named Sam Beale told me. I believed him. It is not important, Mrs. Harris. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'll see the district attorney. What is it, Mrs. Harris? Well, he was in the lunchroom this morning. Oh, he is a friend of ours, Matt Handers. Anders? Yes, he is a magazine writer. He helped Sylvan and me to escape. The name of the man I met wasn't Anders, it was Abbott. Oh, well, then it was not the same but man. But it's him, it's the same man. Can I use your phone? Yeah. What is the matter, Mrs. Harris? Who are you calling? I've had enough of your small talk and wisecracks, Abbott. You're going to answer questions. What if I don't? You're making it hard on yourself. You think it's going to go easy on you guys when the cops start wondering what happened to me? They won't. Won't they? I went to see Mrs. Harris to find out what she knew about me. I dropped an envelope. Okay. Pulled a rock. I made a mistake. Maybe I'm not smart. But you guys are kidding yourselves. If you think I'm not smart enough to leave a note at the hotel, it'll make it tough on you if anything happens to me. All right, you didn't like what Harris and I were doing? So you pushed Jack and now you're framing some dumb cop, huh? That's what you say. What do you want, Abbott? Well, you know what they say in politics. If you can't fight him, join him. You got me, I got the note. Now, you can always use an extra guy. I could use a job. That way everybody's happy, nobody gets hurt. Bill was gonna okay the proposition. I knew he was. And I was gonna get close enough to him to get proof that he was behind Jack Harris's murder in the frame of Sylvan. Cops! Are you cute, Buster? Hold it! Sit down, Mr. Bill. I was there when the chief of police returned 6210 to patrolman Sylvan Danzig. And I said goodbye. But that night driving out to the airport, I couldn't resist getting a peek at Sylvan pounding his beat. <laughs> 